Hey, wonderful. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing? So it is 7.30 as promised and um, I'm here to just share some insights on getting started with property investing. So I'm just going to give it a few minutes for others to log in. I decided, you know what? I'm going to put small little things together so that I don't get carried away. Because when I, get, when I get to talking about property, I totally, totally get carried away. So while we're waiting for people to log in and to view, I just want to give a quick introduction on who I am. So my name is Genevieve Stafford Jack. I am the owner of FHC Consulting. I was born and raised in KwaZulu Natal, the only province with a surname, KwaZulu Natal. <laughs> so, you know, when I was growing up, I grew up on the other side of life, uh, the other side of the train tracks, as they would say in the American movies we watch. I had a lot of limiting beliefs because I came from a poor neighborhood. And all I could be at that time in my mind, in my understanding, was possibly a bank teller. I was a young girl and people that were making it and shooting the lights out were bank tellers. So I naturally thought the best in my life, this is what I could be, where there's nothing wrong with that because everything has a time and place. But that at that time for me was my limiting belief. And as life went on, Later, I dreamed. I dreamed with my eyes wide open. And sometimes my mother would tell me I'm such a daydreamer. Because you know why? I just dreamed of some stuff that was totally ridiculous to her. So I will just share a little bit more. I see there are people coming in. So um, I'll get to the crux of getting started with property uh, investing in a moment. But just to give you a bit of insights on who I am. So nonetheless, I, like I said, I, I dreamed my eyes wide open and I felt that I had a lot more to give. And if anything, I felt that I was meant for something great in my life. And of course, those around me, what do they say? You will never amount to anything. You come from a poor neighborhood. Go to school. Get a job. And that's what I was told, go to school. Like the education part wasn't even part of the deal because we didn't have money to do that, right? Go to school, get a job, and try to be better than you were yesterday. And that really was the way I'd grown up. However, you know, as I'd grown up in life, I, I came to understand there was a lot of different things uh, in terms of work and whatnot. And then I learned this word, entrepreneur. And it was never used in my space much. But uh, nonetheless, when I came to understand what entrepreneurship is, it was really just working for yourself and doing the most. That's what I understood at that time. So how did I become an entrepreneur and why now? So I really just believe that it all started with difficult circumstances. So quickly, as I got a job, came out of school, I was a cleaner, I was a cashier, you know, went into call center, I was a, an au pair, I did some traveling as an au pair, and, 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 speed up my process, I came up to Johannesburg, call center agent and the likes, <clears throat> and then I got into software testing, I got into a very much a strategic job, and before I left the workplace, I remember that day like it was yesterday, because it was both exciting and nerve-wracking for me, I got a huge paycheck when I left, and, um, the end of the day, I just wondered, you know, this paycheck could probably keep me for a month and a half, but way too after that. And, and life after that was very interesting because I had already met with property investing. I had already met up with so many different things because my husband and I, serial entrepreneurs that we are, had gotten into a number of business ventures. And in these different business ventures, uh, from car rental to nappy distribution to chicken farming and i always pause for the chicken farming but because that <laughs> was quite a lesson in the world of entrepreneurship but fast forward all of these different business ventures there was high highs but some of the lows were low lows and one of the lows was five million low 
and that's how we started in property. And with that, I would like to then say that's how I was introduced into the world of entrepreneurship without a safeguard around me in terms of falling back onto my onto my onto the job that I had. Hi, good evening, Mandy. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. So yeah, it's just been quite a roller coaster ride. There's nothing glitz and glamour about it, but I'll tell you this much. <clears throat> There's nothing that I would change. There are some days I still do think, maybe I could have changed the approach to um, my second income stream. Maybe I could have changed the approach to X, Y, Z. But those days I must admit I'm very cynical and I'm watching because of current circumstances. I'm looking back and then I'm looking forward and I'm looking back. But in, in essence, I, I don't think when I sit where I am, that I would change it for anything. Good evening, Ashok. Thank you so much for joining. So yeah, that's for me, how did I become an entrepreneur? I had a bigger vision on life and being in the software space, I came into training and coaching and I loved it because I kind of weaseled my way into training and coaching, okay, while I was still in the workplace. And weaseling my way into training and coaching really just gave birth in me the desire to always teach and learn and learn and teach and teach and learn. And I'll tell you along the lines in, in this entrepreneurial, serial entrepreneurial journey is where the property investment or the property investment journey really started. So I got my first flat back in 2005, got the flat, done the flat up, the best tiles you can think of, the nicest tiles in the wall, there's a feature wall, eye level oven and, 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 and. Yes, I was that girl. So I've come from quite a colorful background. And the reason besides just waiting for everyone to log in in the first few minutes, I share that is that I need you to understand who you're listening to. And, you know, if you may ask questions, then who are you talking to? Because I don't want this to be one-sided. I want you to blow up the comments. I, I would love that if there's something that resonates with you, that you drop it down in the comments. If there's something that say, you say, you know what, Jen, you just hit the nail on the spot. Or even if you say, you know what, chick, you're smoking your socks. That too is okay. <laughs> All right. So I really would love that this, um, this uh, live video that I'm doing this evening is interactive. So what I'd like to share with you um, a little bit more is how I started my business. I left the, the world of the safety net of corporate. I got into my business, a training and coaching company. And for a lot of the time, I just felt like I need to find my ideal clients. And in finding my ideal clients, I started finding smaller companies that didn't have the training component, but only needed that training component, component periodically. And that's where I plugged in. And I found that that was my niche. So I plugged into many companies that way. And I delivered my services in terms of a trainer, a seat, a facilitator, as well as coaching. But what was really beautiful about the whole journey is that it was in my area of expertise. So it was IT for the long time. At one given time, it was within property, training and coaching. But it was for a short while. And I soon realized where I love the vision of the people that started the company, my vision was a little bit different. So I continued with my IT world because I wanted to shape my signature in property. Why? Because my love for property and what property did for me, it, it, was, it was quite big. It helped us coming out of a financial rut. It helped us harness who we are. I just want to tell you a little story. I'm sure you, some of you may relate that I'd seen coming in afterwards. If I haven't mentioned your name along the way, please forgive me. But as I see names coming in, I will certainly address to you and greet you. So in this space, for me, I just realized that when we were in property, there's so much about who we are, where we, who we were at the time needed to change. And nobody told us that when we got into property investing. But yes, we would hear that there's mindset and we'd hear all these wonderful stuff that to me sounded fluffy at the time. And getting into the space, we needed a shift. We tapped into negotiation skills, into sales skills, into skills that were far beyond where we thought we would actually be. 
And that was the best thing we could have done because it's in that property journey that I harnessed who I am as a business owner and who my husband is as a business owner. We own separate businesses. <laughs> Thank God for that. Small mercies, I tell you. <laughs> and um, in all of this, you know, this is where I just really want to share with you in terms of getting started in property investing. It's not just going out to get the property. It's a whole lot more than that. So here's a quick story. Hi, Nozibel. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Here's a quick story. How many of you relate to this story? I'm sure some of you may relate. You grew up and somewhere along the line when you learned about property investing, it was one of the most laziest assets that will give you money on a monthly basis because we believed our tenants would give us our money due to us monthly. Yes, I was also, I also fell into that same trap because I too got a flat and I got tenants, a number of different tenants. One tenant was so super clean, but always paid 95% of the rent. <laughs> and then there was one tenant that was like, was a disaster area. Uh, and that tenant, somewhere along the line, paid me all the money up front. And then there was another tenant that was kind of halfway between the disaster area and this clean person that, you know, but nonetheless, I learned that I would buy property. And if I buy property, it's okay if you supplement in the first two to three years, because if you supplement in the first two to three years, then eventually you're going to break even, then you're going to get neutral, and then you're going to start earning an income. Who's with me on that one? Who learned property investing that sort of lazy way growing up? And when I say growing up, I'm talking about probably from 20s, <laughs> okay? So this is why, for me, my passion today is just really sharing about training and coaching and coaching and training. Why? Because we paid 5 million rand in school fees. And I call that 5 million rand in school fees because that's how much debt we were in when we started in property coach, in property investing. So I tell you all of that just to let you know that if there's one thing you need to know is that tonight you are in good company. And in this property training and coaching, but when I I'd started on in terms of training and sharing from my experience, showing you my social proof of taking you to the different properties, a lot of my, my students can attest to having been to some of the properties that I've been involved in, the collaborations that I have with M5 Property Addicts, so that I can show you that what I'm teaching you, it's not here. It's not only here, it is here and it has manifested, okay? It has helped us out of a rut of 5 million rand. Some days I still get the creeps up my back, like, oh my God, what were we thinking? <laughs> so for me, I saw the gap in the market that there's a lack of education and a lack of clarity in how to go about investing in property. People usually know very little about how property investment really works. And the majority of us, and if I may, if you allow me to, may use that generalization, the majority of us really have this bank financing option only. Did you know that there's more than bank financing? If you know that, drop it in the comments below and say, yes, of course, Jen, I know. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot more to bank financing, right? And this is where we had gotten our breakthrough because we found the different strategies that work for us. And we started working those strategies in terms of sourcing deals. We'll find them. We'll put them together. We'll put a proposal. But remember, guys, we needed to harness the skill of understanding negotiating, understanding sales, understanding who we are as people in order for us to grow. Right. And that is a big chunk of learning and getting starting with property investing. So are you ready for this wild journey? If some of you that have not started the journey yet, and those of you that have started the journey, we love to hear pearls of wisdom from you because we, if there's anything I really know is that education and clarity is so desperately sought out in the market. And because it fits with who I am, I'm able to invest, with the sourcing and the joint ventures, the creative financing, and I'm able to teach in terms of training and coaching. 
But you know what was another secret that I haven't told many people? One of my secrets is that I collaborate. I collaborate with M5 property addicts. When there's some things that they may need that is up my alley for, for in terms of my skill, I lend my skill to them. But when they get into a deal and they're doing something as crazy as crowdfunding, guys, I started doing this one crowdfunding deal. They're actually going to have a show and tell very soon about this crowdfunding deal that they had. So, of course, where do you think I put my money? You're right. So, property investing is so much more than going to the bank for a bond to get a tenant to pay you. So, I just want to hear from you. Are you happy so far that you're here? Have you learned anything? Because, you know, the one thing I learned over time in property is that we cover so many different profitable strategies, but you need to know where you are. Because if you don't know where you are, you're then left in want. You don't know what you don't know, right? So we're 15 minutes in. Quite a few of you have joined. I really appreciate all the likes and the loves. Please, guys, keep going. The comments. Keep going with the comments. I would love to hear your comments. So what I want to share with you is that, again, property in terms of property investing is not all romance. Why? Because there are challenging um, or challenges, should I say, challenges on the road, okay? The main challenges really for me is, is understanding in the space that I'm in who I'm dealing with, which is my power team. What is the power team, Jim? Well, my power team is, do I meet real estate agents often? Do I go in? Thank you so much, Ashok. Um, great so far. Wonderful. Do I have an attorney that's going to help with my paperwork? Do I have people that are surrounding me that have got the right skill? You know, the coach that we've had and we still go to from time to time is Andrew Walker. Recently, and I really think this is his quote. So forgive me if I'm misquoting anybody here. Recently, he said, I, as the property investor in this whole power team, need to be the weakest link. Because if I am not the weakest link, the people that are surrounding me, who are they and what are they doing there? That was my interpretation of his very eloquently put statement. It was something that I just remembered now, but I'm sure I'll remember a little bit later how to put that statement. So nonetheless, I have just found that in terms of any venture that we get into, mentors and coaches really with a proven track record, which is why I even ask my, my team members, you want to come at me? To go and find, to go and look at a deal. You want to come with me to go and see a deal. Do so you want to come with me to go and see where my money is in that deal? Why? Because they need to understand the proven track record and the area of expertise that I deal in. And if I don't know, that it's okay that I don't know. But to link them up to where I know. So in terms of some of the challenging things in life, as a coach, one of the things I realized is that I leverage off of the power of the people that are around me. And you know what comes out of there? One day I had gone through with a student and he had come through for training. He was the only person that pitched up for training. My heart partly for a split second was so sore, but another part of me felt like he's given up his time in the week to come for training. And everybody that weren't able to make it that day, I mean, it went from a room of eight people to one person, right? If I cannot give him my all, then I am a fraud in what I'm doing. And I know that I'm not a fraud in what I'm doing. So my greatest success when I look back in time as to what I've done is continuously giving my all to my students. You know why? I love when my students come back to me and tell me, Jen, do you know what? I thank you for being in the right place at the right time. In fact, one of my students, Genevieve, even shared that this evening with me, saying, thank you. When I made up my mind, it's like the universe conspired to me excelling in this particular space. And really, I love when my students come back and tell me, thank you. I bought my first property. I bought my next property. Or thank you for being there 
thank you for that due diligence because you know what, Jen, it's changed my life for the better. And those are the successes that I celebrate daily because nothing can put more joy in my heart as Genevieve. And if my students know me, they know that I can get so fluffy about things. Then them coming to tell me, Jen, thank you for helping me. Because what you've done is you've touched me, you've moved me, and you, you have no idea how you've helped shift my space. So I'm going on about a lot of these things. I really want to get into a few points that I have prepared for you all this evening. And let me just go into, there we go. Some of the pointers that I really just put uh, together for you this evening is, to explain to you, getting started in property is not just fluffy and romantic. There's a lot of things that I've already touched in terms of the lessons that I had gone through. But guys, one of the things I really need you to understand is that research in getting started in property investing is so vital. Don't depend on what your friend says. Don't depend on what you think your friend knows. Because there's a lot of times that my students would then come and tell me, if if I listened to my friend, I would still just be sitting with my head in my hand. Have you ever had that experience that you've gone on your friend's advice and your friend was far from an expert in that particular space? I want to hear from you. Have you ever had that experience, whether it be in property or in business or anything like that? Okay. So I want to say to you what piques your interest in property is something that you need to pursue. I actually just want to drop that question um, into the comments field while I'm talking to you guys. Talk, talk, type, type, talk, talk, type. Cool. So my question to you is, what piques your interest in property? If your friend tells you something, do you listen to your friend or do you go back and you do research? Because research is vital. Another reason when you get started in property, know what property strategies will work for you where you are. So if you haven't done your research to get into training to understand what the property strategies are, you'll never know what property strategies are there. Because once you know the property strategies that are there, you will know where your money is. You will know where you are. You will know how you're going to grow from that particular point of view. Had TJ and I sat down and said, well, you know, our friend said you need money to make money. And when people say you don't need money to make money, they're lying. Well, hmm, not so much in property. Because remember, we were in a lot of debt. What did we need money for? The resources that we were going to use. Put gas in our tank and drive the neighborhood. Put gas in our tank and go and visit a real estate agent. Pick up the phone, make that phone call to a real estate agent to say, we're coming to view property. So are those resources so far-fetched that they're not currently in your space? So my question is, do you know different property strategies? That's what we unpack on a, to a large degree. Why? Because we want to first see where you are. When we unpack the strategies, where are you going to and what do we put together? Because what we put together is then us knowing how property investing is going to help us out of the space we're in. So are you ready for another statement? Another statement is know what property strategies will work for you where you are. And I dropped these points in the comments so that whoever wants to revisit this particular video can see some of the questions that had come out throughout the video. And I really want to say, guys, I'm so passionate about this. I get, I, get, I get taken up in a storm. Why? Because I know what has helped me out of my muck and mire. And the advantages of going into property investing is that when you know what your strategy is, you know where you are working from. Because when you know where you are, where you're working from, and the strategy you need to work within, then for me, it's a no-brainer. That's why you need to get started in property already. Hey, how's that one for, um, I'm sure that for some, some of you may be like, oh, Jen, I didn't think about that. So it will be really good to hear from you. Guys, are you still following me? 
Am I still making a lot of sense to you? Are you finding value in this particular live video? I would love to hear from you in the comments. And here's another pointer while you type in the comments as I wait to hear from you. Use the right tools. When you come into property investing, use the right tools. What are the right tools? You may ask me. The right tools would then use the internet in the right way. Find your properties online. Generate your leads online. Call agents, but be specific with what you're looking for. When I call estate agents, I ask them, please, I am looking for fix-me-uppers. I don't use words like distressed and motivated sellers and, and, and. I choose my words. And that is a big lesson I learned on the ground. Because the moment you go and you tell a property, uh, um, an estate agent, I'm a property investor, they're like, ooh, not you, Satan. Some of them just go like, mm, I'm not ready for you. I was never ready. What are you going to say? I'm looking for a property that needs to be fixed up. Whether it's old-fashioned or broken down, that is what I specialize in. You be truthful with them, but be careful of the words you use. So in terms of using the right tools, I also want to say use the right words because you are there to build a relationship. Okay? So I trust so far that you've gotten value. I'm not going to keep you much longer because my idea was really just to share with many of you what happens behind the scenes at FHC Consulting and some of the questions that come through to me. And sometimes when I'm just so excited and I want to share all the information and so forth and so on. You know, the greatest advantages I find from property investing is that there's passive income and that there's cash flow. And you may see, but, oh, but Jen, isn't it the same thing? Well, I want to put it this way. When you do a flip, that is a huge amount of money at the same time, right? That is a huge cash flow, a huge influx of cash at the same time. So maybe I shouldn't use the word cash flow. It's a huge influx of, of cash. But that was over a long period of time after doing a flip. But then there's passive income. Basically, what does that mean? Is that you've got a, a property, you've got a tenant, and your tenant pays you. And when they pay you, the rent covers your bond, the utilities, yes, and the utilities. Stop supplementing where you are. It covers the bond, it covers the utilities, and it covers the different management and maintenance fees. Huh? What did I say? The wrong words. Yes, there's management fees and there's maintenance fees. And let me just highlight those two quickly. When you have a burst geezer, and okay, maybe that's not the best example. Your door falls off and you need to replace that door. Are you going to go into your pockets? That's not an investment when it takes money out of your pockets. So on a monthly basis, you will have a maintenance fee, small 5%, 7%, 8%. Different investors do different things. I usually say start off with a minimum of 5%, 5% of your rent. Let it accumulate over time. If a door needs to be replaced, go back into that pocket, that little kitty, and then go and replace the door. Why? Because your property needs to pay for itself. Even in business, any business ventures that I go into, that business venture is not paying for itself. I give a three months maximum, but that's me as an entrepreneur. I give a three months maximum. After three months, I cut it loose. Why? Because if it keeps taking money out of my pockets, I'm apologizing to people that I don't have cash flow for this because I want that particular venture to fund itself. So I take some of these property strategies far, <laughs> a little bit too far, somebody may say. So in terms of investing, what, what can property give you? Property gives you your passive income. It gives you a huge income after spending time either property managing and then flipping that particular property. What else can property do for you? When you invest, you can also collaborate. Let me tell you my secret. One of my biggest secrets, open secrets, is that I still live vicariously through some of the deals that I can partner up with. Because that's where I learn the most from. 
Have I ever done a flip on my own? No, I've done it with the partner. I've done it in a joint venture. Why? Because every other day I'm thinking, is a builder coming? Uh, are they going to do this? Are they going to do that? Not fretting, but you know, the, there's that angst that will still come up within you. And I've been doing this since 2016. So my excitement still can get a little bit over. One of the other partners, like I shared with you earlier, M5 Property Addicts, they now have linked up with a stock fell. So guess who's going to be part of the stock fell from September? Why? I'm saying September. I need to hit a certain milestone, and that milestone needs to come on the 31st of, of August. And when I hit that, it needs to manifest again by the end of September. And when it does that, then I'll go and invest in the stock file. Because in my business, as a business somebody, I'm learning different ways of how, how many ways can I create an income stream. But in the same breath, I'm thankful that in all of these different ways, I want to create an income stream. What am I doing? I'm also teaching and training and giving back. Yeah, I, for me, that is my part of giving back. It's what ticks all my boxes so that I can help the next person's journey propel so that they can move forward and that they can move forward with absolute velocity. So coming towards the end of my live video, because in my mind, I thought it was going to be 30 minutes, but clearly it's not going to be 30 minutes, maybe another seven to 10 minutes. So let's give it a go. So guys, if you're still with me, please drop those likes, share the video, share the live if you need to, comment below. I love, love hearing from you. So I want to also say to you that in property, property is giving you a passive income or a huge influx of money or property helps you to collaborate so that you can understand what is happening in the market through somebody else's eyes. But of course, I also always say, even if you are collaborating, always know how to do due diligence. If property can do you, you do for You know what you can do for property? You can be a problem solver. Why? Because a property investor doesn't just go and a deal is there. A property investor creates the deal. They create the opportunity. Why? Because when we start understanding why people are selling, guys, humanity needs to kick in before money kicks in, okay? When we understand why people are selling, you need to then understand why you are a problem solver. You are a problem solver and you strategically placed in that position that deal why because if somebody is selling and they need to sell like yesterday or whatever the case is okay you need to stand there and understand what is going on and when you are able to solve for that problem i promise you that is when property investing takes on a new turn i don't know if you were prepared for that one but you know um, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was absolutely honored to sit amongst people that were uh, entering a competition called Investor of the Year. And my husband, of course, is one of them. So he gets my support with that. And where he is, I'm his pom-pom girl. I'm his, I'm his help meet. God has put me here for a reason, right? We may not always be in the same vision or the same way of doing things, but our end goal is to be problem solvers. And nonetheless, so we were in this investor of the year and he shared his deal. So complex. Some days I'm like, Jesus, take the wheel, this guy. <laughs> and then there was one of the investors that said, when he sold the property that he got, he did bridging finance, he sold the property. And all the lady said is she wanted to launch her brand. Pet brand of food. And when he completed the whole process of sharing what he did from an investor point of view, how he got everybody involved in the family. Then he shared the advert of the branding of the food and the food being on the shelves. Guys, that's why I say, what can you give back to property investing? And if that is not it, then I don't know. So I trust that these nuggets have been useful to you. I trust that getting started in property 
now just takes on a different goal for you, a different shape for you. And in ending this live video this evening, I'm just asking you this evening, what behaviors do you as a person need to harness? I'm going to drop that, that question in the comments field. What behaviors do you need to harness where you are? All right. Cool. That particular comment has gone in there. So I ask you, what, what behaviors do you need to harness? What, off the cuff, and when I think about it, I needed to identify opportunities. How do you identify opportunities like this guy did by actually just going in to solve the problem of getting pet food on the shelf, right? You need to identify what op opportunities are there. How are you doing that? How do you do that even in work? You educate yourself. You put yourself in a space so that you are stronger and you are a lot more educated. What else do you do? You harness your other personal traits. I am a talker by nature. So what do you think I needed to harness? I needed to keep this and this open. I'm really good. I really believe my superpower is listening. However, I also needed to learn that at some given point, I needed to and listen. Because when you listen, you're able to be a problem solver. How then are you going about to harness these personal traits of yours? And maybe the final one is where do you network? I find that networking is so, so very important. Because when it comes to networking, you need to know where you're going to find a, an investor, perhaps. Somebody that is going to buy your deal if you're a sourcing partner. And if you don't know what that means, let's go back to the first one. Then you need to educate. You want to know what due diligence is? Then you need to educate. Because there's so much that can come from property. And property can give you the power of flexible life lifestyle it gives you the power of financial freedom i don't know so much about just having financial freedom and never having to work ever again because you're a landlord right so you're going to have to do something for the money and i i listen to some people that say well it's going to give you financial freedom and you never have to work again you may never have to work however you're going to have to do something for the money that comes in whether it's one hour a week five hours a month, or whatever it is, there's got to be a give and take. Because if you're never working at all for that month, somebody's stealing from you and you don't even know it. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that one in for, <laughs> for good measure. So I want to say to you guys, this has been an awesome evening. Thank you for allowing me to come and share with you about getting started with property investing. Nozibel says more valuable information. That is absolutely wonderful. I'm so glad that I've been able to be of service to you, share valuable information to you. And I think I would be robbing this moment if I didn't share with you that I generally run a one day training and the one day training is coming this Saturday. And in lieu of Women's Month, like Nausey Bell will say, she's bought her ticket. She has secured her space. And then she had the blessing of bringing somebody for free. So if you really would like to up your knowledge and up your game in where you are and take it to a new level, harness your skill, understand the property strategies that they are, and knowing where to start from where you are and, and refine that process, then come join us this Saturday in Sunning Hill from nine o'clock till four o'clock. Pay for yourself and bring somebody for free. For free, guys. For free. Why? Because we want to get as many people educated and clarify the misconceptions that are there. And for me, that is part of me giving back to the greater good of knowing exactly what property investing has done for me and for my household. You know, I, if I even have to start on that topic again, opening up that can of worms, I will be here for days. 
But I want to end off with saying thank you so much for joining me. I trust that those nuggets has helped you. I trust that the questions that I've left in the comments field has been of value. And if you are waiting and wondering, wait no longer, wait no further. Buy one, get one free. Actually, let me do this as I type. You know, me and my typing while I'm busy here. This is definitely a new experience for me as I type what the link is for the property training that is happening on the 17th of August. So like I said, from nine to four at my Sunning Hill campus, I do not have more than 12 people at a given time. I structure it as a small environment so that we've got that opportunity to ask questions, delve deep down into strategies that you may heard of, may never have heard of, and you get the comfort that when you walk out the door, you're walking out the door with a fully fledged skill in your pocket. So I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much, guys, for joining me this evening. Nozi Bell, thank you so much for the, the evening and for your insights as well. I look forward to seeing you in Sunning Hill. You have made the right choice. And I know that you and Paul are going to leave there with valuable information. Thank you so much for, to Ashok that has shared his information that yes, your net, your net work is your net, your net worth. And I know that when I got to selling uh, different property opportunities, I was in the right net work. And right now, when they hear the name Genevieve or they hear the name Gina or TJ, it, it's this household brand kind of at the back of some people's minds. Why? Because we were there harnessing that particular skill. Thank you so much, Masala, for joining as well. Masala is one of my students. Love that you came to support me here, sharing my heart out to everybody. And like I said, guys, there are actually three seats left, by the way. I didn't say that part, right? There are three seats, literally three seats left where you buy your one seat and your seat will be for your partner. But there are three paid seats left. And by default, with the three paid seats, you've got three free seats. Three paid seats left at $2.99. And if anything, the last time you may have bought a scarf, that could have been $2.99. So use your $2.99 wisely. And I look forward to serving you on Saturday, 9 till 4, in Sunning Hill. Why? Because we are here to serve you, and we know that the gap in the market is education and clarity, and sometimes education comes at quite a price. And here we are sharing with you, if we could share this for free, what do you think we'd be sharing on Saturday? So we look forward to serving you. Take good care and have a blessed evening further.